Good afternoon and welcome to this Friday, August 9th edition of Guadalupe Valley Views. I'm Egan Barthels. It was my intention earlier in the week, if so apologies are in order because I never really got to catch up with the folks that I had uh, pl- intended on interviewing uh, this week. And uh, one of those uh, folks was going to be Brian Yanta, the AgriLife Extension agent in Goliad County. I got a chance to talk to him a little bit this week, and uh, he's with the Goliad County area, Go Texas. Now, you've heard on this this program before, and he's also the county agent down there. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it was my intention to have him on the show and also talk to the ambassador of Goliad County area, Go Texan. Uh, and we were going to just talk about some of the fundraisers they've got. Now, you've on this program here on the Guadalupe Valley Views in the past, uh, you've heard us interview many folks with the area of GoTex and organizations, uh, including uh, Gonzales County, where we've talked to uh, Sherry Hugh Hooper with the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And, uh, and it's raising scholarships uh, for local students in that particular county. Well, this weekend we're talking about Goliad County. And unfortunately, by the time I'm recording this and the time you hear this, it's not really a good time at all. It's... Uh, here about 11 o'clock on a Thursday night when I'm getting this show put together as we just uh, got back into town for some other um, other projects that I was working on uh, besides this radio show. So, again, my apologies to them. But what I was going to talk to them about is the Goliad County Area Go Texan Touring Pro PBR. It's a bull riding event that will be going on at the Goliad County Fairgrounds on Saturday uh, they'll have uh, Miss Rodeo Texas down there. They also have a uh, rodeo client. Leon Coffee's not going to be there. I know in the advertising, I know there's been a schedule change. Uh, so Leon's not going to be there, but they will have another gentleman whose name I don't have off the top of my head. My apologies for that, too. I'm not really winning friends and influencing people now, am I, if I don't have all my stuff together. Anyway, it's an event going on Goliad County Fairgrounds. It's on 183 South this weekend in Goliad. And, look, it is... Uh, it's another way to kind of give youth, uh, give back to the youth of uh, Goliad. And so if you're looking for something to do and you like a little bull riding, that may be on uh, your agenda for this weekend. Speaking of this weekend, we're looking at uh, meteorologist Bill Heckey and the Weather Center. And he said not really much relief in sight. Matter of fact, right now let's uh, check in with meteorologist Bill Heckey and get a quick look at your weekend weather forecast here on Guadalupe Valley Views. Bill? Weather Will says it's hotter than a fire and brimstone preacher at an old-time revival. And it's going to continue that way. We've got the temperatures expected to be right around 100, 101, 102. That'll be in the shade. Direct sunlight, you're hotter. Heat indices can get us above 110. So it is going to remain dangerously hot for the next several days. And I don't see any major changes. At times, we can get a little bit of a sea breeze off the Gulf in the evening, early night time. And we are going to see a disturbance make its way down to as close as the Red River. But right now, I can't see that being a strong enough surge of cool air to change things for. So the main thing is dress for the weather, stay hydrated, take the work and play breaks, check on one another. Nothing live left in the automobile, no pets, no plants, no people. Check that back seat. And if you can get her done in the morning, then get her done. From the Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Bill Heckey. You are kidding, sir, with some of those heat advisories that have been issued across south and central Texas, even along the Gulf Coast, even hitting that water this weekend. It is warm. So as he says, you know, you but myself, I can feel it on my face, just just that heat. It is and we've talked about this. You know, all week I I, I was just talking to some folks about this weather and wasn't that something back in July we had those two or three days where it was real nice and I think that just teasing us a little bit, we had those temperatures in the sixties. I thought it and a friend of mine put it on Snapchat and said Hey, this is the weather that kind of feels like it reminds me of Rio Dosa, New Mexico. I mean, it was not humid. It was cool. It was beautiful. But we couldn't avoid it. It is August, and we are in the dog days of summer. And uh, so let's all maybe find a little extra scoop of some homemade ice cream this afternoon. Wouldn't that be nice? I think it would. So let's talk about a few things going on. Folks saying, Egan, where are you now? Well, 
right here with you uh, on this program that we've been doing here on uh, Texas Public Radio. I think probably going to be coming up on two years. It is hard to believe. I want. To, I think it is. I uh, yeah. It, it has been two years in October, right around that uh, come and take it anniversary mark. Um, but I do appreciate you notching a little time out of your schedule. And and all of our guests that we've had on this program, uh, notching a little time out of their schedule for us to talk about just some things of interest that are uh, happening uh, around Gonzales County, uh, the Guadalupe Valley in South Central Texas. And some of those may not be relevant, but it's it's happening next door. And there really is a lot when you get to thinking about it outside of the Alamo or the capital city or the Bayou City of Houston or down around Corpus Christi. We have a lot that, that's always happening here. Uh, just moments ago, I was mentioning about the, the bull riding going on in, in Goliad this weekend. Um, and it is neat to kind of just reach out and find out what's happening down the street or, or right here in our hometown. And so I'd like to extend this invitation to you that if you have a guest or a story idea, uh, you can email me directly. Uh, that email address that I give you uh, on this show, as well as on our daily Sosin Text Radio News updates, um, that, that email address is news. N E W S at Sosentex. That's S O C E N T X B B dot com. News at Sosentex B B dot com. Best way to get it, reach out to me. Send me your news releases from your your nonprofit organization, your church group, your civic group, um, your school events, anything that you have going on. Just a uh, one little thing to add extra, and, and I'd be much appreciated to and honored to be on your email list. So please do that. Again, that's news at com. One thing I like to do uh, sometimes is uh, take a look at, and talk because agriculture around the area uh, affects a lot of the local economy uh, here in Gonzales County. When you're talking about beef cattle production, you're talking about uh, farming. Uh, the harvest is on right now with the harvesting of milo and corn, cotton right around the corner. And uh, our friend John Tuggle with Tuggle & Company reporting uh, as of Thursday night, while the near-term Corn Belt weather forecasts are non-threatening, later in the month the forecasts become warmer and drier, which is largely responsible for stronger corn and soybean markets today. There's also on Monday morning the matter of probably the most anticipated USDA crop report in some time. What will the USDA project as planted and harvested acres? And is the 10 bushels an acre cut in the yield they make in June, which is down to 166 bushels an acre enough to give in the challenge of growing conditions this crop has endured? While a portion of the supply side uncertainty will be resolved on Monday, a great deal of uncertainty will still exist and markets will quickly revert to trading the forthcoming weather for the remainder of the growing season. And the balance of what happens with the grain markets, you know, the cattle market is going to react to that and uh, vice versa. So we're just going to kind of wait and see what plays out on, on Monday. But that's some of the stuff that's going on through the uh, the ag world. I want to get to a story that was in the Gonzales Enquirer. And, uh, you know, we've just there's a lot of good news that that happens uh, all across this wonderful county, unfortunately, we do have some bad things happen. One of those was a murder that had taken place uh, in Gonzales. Garrett McGinley with the Gonzales in- Inquirer reporting that Gonzales police have issued an arrest warrant for a man named Juan Carlos Mora Morena in connection with the murder of Gonzalo Zuniga Reyes, a Gonzales man who was found dead Wednesday, July 31st. Reyes was reported missing Friday, July 26th, around 10 o'clock by a family member. He was last knee, seen near the Independence Motel at Gonzales about 2.30 earlier in the morning, earlier the same day. Police believe Moreno was the last person known to be with Reyes. According to a Gonzales Police Department press release, quote, investigators located what appeared to be blood on the front door and grass near where Reyes was last seen. On Wednesday, July 21st, the body of a deceased man later identified to be Reyes was found by members of Reyes' family approximately eight miles east of Gonzales off of Highway 90 alternate around 100 feet from the road in tall grass. An autopsy performed by the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office determined that Reyes sustained fatal gunshot wounds. Authorities believe 
Moreno, a 26-year-old Hispanic male, has fled the country crossing the Mexican border into Nuevo Laredo at approximately 5.30 a.m. Monday, July 29th. Gonzalez police said they are working with the U.S. Marshal Service to find and arrest Moreno. If you have any information on Juan Carlos Mora Moreno's whereabouts, please contact the Gonzalez Police Department if you have any information. Thursday a week ago, Gonzalez ISD held a town hall meeting, and Mr. John Schumacher, the superintendent of GISD, gave an introduction of himself while promoting the goals of enhancing school climate and culture while striving for student achievement. The audience was provided an opportunity for a Q&A session after the presentation. Over 50 community members, parents, and school representatives attended the event, which was held at Gonzalez Elementary School Thursday, August 1st. Uh, Mr. Schumacher explained the, quote, growth mindset, end quote, mentality of working as a team and the steps GISD plans to take throughout the 2019-2020 school year. He concluded the presentation with a love my tribe quote. GISD is an Apache nation with each campus representing its tribe, also supporting each other on this journey. And GISD looks forward to an amazing year. On a personal note, I want to get back to talking about this particular program. Sometimes we record this in the Texas Public Radio KCTIA and 1450 recording studios located in the Robert Brothers Library uh, building. So when I found out that library card sign-up month is September, I thought this would be a great opportunity to share this information with you. September library card sign-up month is a time uh, here at the Robert Lee Brothers Jr. Memorial Library. Uh, They join with the American Library Association and public libraries nationwide to make sure that every student has the most important school supply of all, a free library card. Resources at the library are available to anyone who has a library card, in addition to books, audiobooks, magazines, movies, Wi-Fi, printing, and computers. The local library offers access to e-books, free language learning, and online Texas driver's handbooks and practice tests. All are backed by friendly, knowledgeable staff that support academic achievement. There's really something for everyone, and it's all free with a library card. And for information uh, how to sign up for a library card, you may visit the Robert Lee Brothers Jr. Memorial Library in person or online at gonzales.texas.gov. And... Uh, Stop in and say hello to Caroline Helms Blundell. That website, again, gonzales.texas.gov. And it's, if it's been a while that uh, that you've been to the, to the library, it's a place to cool off and you want to go somewhere cool, but you know, want to get out of the house or, or find something cool to do. Yeah, it, it's been a while since I've been into the library. You know, I used to go to the one that was over across from the old HEB, uh, you know, by between the Presbyterian Church and the, which is now the uh, Primary Academy, yeah, right there, uh, went in there and and they just they outgrown that that space, and so when they moved into the old First National Bank uh, Wells Fargo building uh, in Gonzales, I thought you know well, what can they all put in there, and if you take trips and you go to places like San Antonio where there's obviously history there from the San Fernando Cathedral to the did I say that right San Fer, San Fernando Cathedral uh, over to the Alamo, but here locally I think this was it's a, it's a supplemental visit if you go to the museum and learn about the, the history of Gonzales there come and take it with the come and take it cannon stop in the library you can find so much I was just I thought it was neat and I never really had an opportunity to share it with you but looking back on on some of the things you know obviously I looked at the, the radio history. Uh, talking about this station in particular and its days when it started back in the late 40s in Gonzales. But, you know, they staged a circus here. I was learning more about the Gonzales County Fair, I think. I'm not sure if that was the actual name of it. There was an event here in July, uh, in, I think in the 40s and 50s, called the Friar Frolic. You know, some neat things like that that, you know, as our elder generations pass on and take those stories with them at least there is some of that memory that is in our library here in gonzalez and you can go in and you can 
search for just about anything. I mean, there's so much more history.